I'm KT Lowe, and I'm here to remind you that there is only one flavor in the world that matters, and that flavor is chocolate. Let's talk about books. Now, there's nothing better in the world than eating chocolate. I think we can agree on that. But when we can't eat chocolate, we may as well find ways to indulge in it anyway, so we can read about chocolate. I'm going to preview three different books on chocolate that I found useful in my life. The first one is uh, The Chocolate Connoisseur by Chloe de Trois-Cousseaux. This is literally a personal investigation of chocolate. Um, the author used to be a buyer for Fortnum & Mason, which is a high-end grocer in Great Britain. She has a degree in agronomy, and this book details her life as a chocolate connoisseur. It talks about her life growing up in Mexico and waiting for Nutella, which wasn't available in Mexico at the time. Now today, Nutella isn't something that she'd normally go for, but at the time, it opened up her world to what chocolate was and what chocolate could be. It inspired her to become the person she is today. It has been criticized for its somewhat obsessive tone. She does love chocolate, but we all do. All of us love chocolate too. So let's take that into account. This is actually a beautiful book, um, and I highly recommend it for people who are really interested in just how far you can go in discovering chocolate. Our second book is by Sophie D. and Michael D. Co. It's The True History of Chocolate. It's now in its third edition. And for those of you who are looking for a basic overview of the history of chocolate, look no further. This book is exquisitely well written. It's meant for the lay reader, it's not meant for historians but it covers so much of everything that you need to know about your favorite food stuff. It's exquisitely written. It's, uh, here, let's, let's just go through the table of contents real quick. Chapter one, the tree of the food of the gods. Yeah. Chapter two, the birth of chocolate, Mesoamerican Genesis. I mean, even the chapter titles are terrific. But it covers everything from the Mesoamerican origins of chocolate to chocolate in the present day. So all of the revolutionary um, changes in the 19th century, the sanction by the Catholic Church, um, the institution of slavery, and some of the less savory practices as well. It's a, it's a worthwhile read. I highly recommend this book as a general overview of the history of chocolate. And the third one is this behemoth. This is Chocolate the Reference Standard by Georg Bernardini. I just picked this up myself. And this is number 3,645 of 5,000 copies. So there's not too many of these guys left. So this book is a, it's basically a review of every single craft chocolatier on the planet with a little bit dedicated to your major players like Nestle, Hershey, uh, Cadbury, people like that. So a chocolatier gets the highest rating. Canada is a big country. And up until a few years ago, with little to no chocolate and confectionery tradition, only Bernard Calabot, offspring of the Belgian chocolatier family Calabot, was able to establish a small chain of 30 shops from Calgary throughout the whole of Canada. How can you have an entire country without chocolate? So it goes to the history of Solo, which opened in 2004, and I've been patronizing it ever since. Um, other chocolates it reviews include Metacase and Escazu, which I've got a couple bars I haven't gotten to yet, Endangered Species, Duffy's, Dead Dog Chocolate. Really? You named your, your chocolate dead dog chocolate? Chocovic, Bonin, Chocolat Bonin, 
which is one of the first shy books I ever tried. It's a book for snobs, let's be honest. But that's what we are. Aside from the multitudinous reviews, there's also a great history of uh, European chocolate, uh, discussion of cultivation, fair trade chocolate, um, heirloom cho chocolate beans, heirloom cacao, different uh, certifications, confectionery, which is different from chocolate, so you're talking more about bonbons and truffles and things of that nature, the equipment, look at that. It's a, it's a great overall single volume reference. Um, there are two editions out. This is the 2015 edition. And while the author says that there will be no further editions published, um, he loves chocolate as much as I do, and I'm not going to believe him. But reading is not why you're here, and I know that. We're here to try some chocolate. So today is Brass Town Chocolate. Uh, Brass Town is out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I have been a fan of their chocolates in the past, and I just got this one, so I'm really eager to try it. This is an Ecuador Manabi 75%. It did win the 2015 Bronze Chocolate Awards for the Americas, and it's won two Good Food Awards, so maybe? Let's try it. So there's a sticker on the back of peeling off. It's got a compass rose on it. It opens up like an envelope with a little description of the cacao itself. Ecuador Manabi. These cacao beans are sourced from Provincia Manabi of Ecuador. They are produced by a cooperative called Fortaleza de Valle, whose main objective is to promote the production of local cacao aromas, thus improving the social, economic, and environmental development of its members. Every bite of Brass Town chocolate will take you on a unique journey via the taste and your imagination. It might take you overseas, or across the mountains, or through the farms, to the places new and unknown, yet infused with an occasional splash of a familiar smell or color. Taste the place, one bite at a time. So here's the bar itself. So here's the bar. Gloss, uneven, more like a, um, more like a very old stained glass where it's kind of frosted over in places. It's pretty, but again, very uneven. Color, it's dark, very dark, very rustic. Spanish boots of Spanish leather brown. Fragrance. Oh, 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 this is really strong. A little cocoa-y, of course. Kind of smoky. Little tiny hints of fruit. A little, it's kind of spicy, kind of peppery, actually. Like you're getting hints of pepper in this. Break is soft. There's no break sound to this whatsoever. Tells me there might be a lot of cocoa butter in this. Um, very few air bubbles, as you can see. And it's melting in my hands. I mean, it's, it's probably got serious amounts of cocoa butter in it. So mouthfeel. The melt on it is agreeable. It's not chunky, it's not powdery, it's medium well conched. Um, it's pretty good. It's, it's definitely something that's, um, it's kind of creamy, but it's not so much so that it's not slick, it's not, it's not gross. It's pretty good. But that's not what matters. What does it actually taste like, right? A 
opening notes are really slow. Really slow. It's definitely got a, 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 a good solid chocolate flavor. Now I'm starting to get apricot, orange, finishes soft. So overall, kind of slow to warm up. Lots of dense chocolate flavor. Like that's the overwhelming note that I'm getting on this. It's really strong chocolate um, with hints of, like I said, apricot, um, orange, but they're not real strong. It's, it's a pretty soft chocolate. There's not a lot of tannins in it. It's not bitter. It's not acidic. It's not astringent. It's just, it's, it's chocolate. It's a nice solid entry for, you know, for people that are just starting to get into chocolate, this is one I would recommend. It's pretty easy to like. If you like your chocolates to be, you know, uncomplicated and generally delicious, this is a really good pick. I'm not quite sure what adventure this chocolate wanted me to go on, but um, I think it took me across the street. This is KT. Thanks for coming to Chocolate in Review. And once again, there is only one flavor in the world that matters, and that flavor is chocolate. See you next time.